Hey, it's your favorite science teacher. Uh, it's it's close to Thanksgiving and uh, we're getting ready. We are um, going to do a quick lesson here on enzymes today. And so uh, I need you to uh, watch the video, of course, and then follow along and fill out your notes. All right. And so, but it's on enzymes and chemical reactions. And so if you'll follow along and that'll be good. And I'm going to share my screen with you. All right, all right, and if you see that, there is what we have right here. So we are gonna start right here. All right. We are talking about chemical reactions. Again, you've already done your bell ringer about chemical reactions. And so uh, let me talk to you about this a little more here. Um, a chemical reaction is a change in a substance uh, or substances that always produces new substance and you've had a little bit of this i know you had this in um, eighth grade with whoever you had for uh, science or physical science because you talked about chemical reactions or chemical changes um there are parts of every chemical reaction and the parts of every chemical reaction there are two parts there is the stuff that you start with that has a name should have already figured that out by already, but if you didn't, uh, it's called the reactants. It's called the reactants. It's, and they're usually on the left side of the arrow. They're usually on the left side of the arrow. All right, and the stuff that you end with are called. They're usually on the right side of the arrow. Okay, and so here are some examples. Uh, if you look over here, you have hydrogen plus oxygen makes water here. All right, the stuff on the left side would be considered to be, let's see, I can do one here, there we go. The stuff on this left side would be called the what? other side would be called the products. All right, and here's another reaction that this is going to be a very important reaction that we're going to be going into uh, coming soon, this, this nine weeks. Um, it is uh, sugar, which is glucose, uh, plus oxygen produces water and carbon dioxide. All right, the stuff on the left side are the Stuff on the right side is the, yes, the products. And in chemical reactions, the bonds of the rea of the pro of the reactants they break, and the bonds of the products they form. And so the things like hydrogen and hydrogen. These were hydrogen atoms. They were bonded together, like in that this first reaction right here with hydrogen and hydrogen. They're held together by a force. But when the chemical reaction happens, they break apart, all right, and they join something else. Let's say, let's say these two colorful ones, these two colorful sheets, we're gonna say are oxygen atoms. And they were bonded together too, right here. This is the oxygen right here, all right? These were bonded together too, but when this chemical reaction happened, they separated, all right? And the hydrogen, they were bonded together. Here's the two hydrogen atoms. They were bonded together. When, they, when this reaction happened, they separated and they form new chemical bonds. If you look, it makes H2O. If this was the oxygen and this was a hydrogen, it made one high, two hydrogens for every one oxygen. You can see kind of, I'm going to try to get my big old thumb out of the way. You can kind of see there's a oxygen and two hydrogen. It makes a totally new substance. So again, what we're trying to show here is that the things, the product, the reactants that you start with, 
their chemical bonds did what when you started with that, when the chemical reaction happens? They break and the bonds of the products do what? They form, all right? And so that's what we want to emphasize. So their bonds break and the product's bonds form. All right. Uh, the chemical reactions can be also classified Endergonic or, uh, uh, or endothermic or exergon, exothermic or exergonic. If it's exothermic or exergonic, that means that this reaction will release energy. It will release energy. We're going to write that right here. Like if, if. It will release. energy or heat okay so heat and it'll release it to the outside to the outside All right to the outside system here. And if it's endothermic or endogonic, it must do what? It's the opposite of releasing. It must take it in. Energy must be taken in. All right, then it means this reaction must, uh, must take in energy or absorb, take in or absorb. Of energy for this reaction to occur. All right, an example, and here are two different examples here. Um, when um, when you combine hydrogen plus oxygen, it produces water, and it produces tremendous amount of heat. And See this in this little quick YouTube video that I'm going to share with you, heat and light. All right, and so you're going to see that with this YouTube video here. I'll show you here. All right, and here is uh, this guy, this science teacher. He's a really cool science teacher. Um, he has got uh, hydrogen and oxygen, and we're not going to watch the whole video, um, but Watch, watch this right now with me here. He's got a two to one ratio of hydrogen and oxygen in there. That was pretty awesome. All right. All right. And the reason I show you that is so that you can see what's happening here. Okay. So if you look at that, he combined hydrogen and oxygen. And what did it produce? It produced water. And you said, I didn't see any water. I think of water is that liquid stuff that we always drink. Well, it produced a small amount of water and uh, it may have produced a small amount of liquid, but it may have been water vapor, uh, but it produced a small amount of water, that hydrogen and oxygen, all right? And it released, but if you also saw it released a huge amount of heat and light, this is what we would call an exothermic or exergonic reaction, okay? Uh, on the other hand, um, reactions that require energy to taken in, you would call them endothermic or endergonic. 
and you would have to take in energy. And we see this with this fallen reaction here. Let me show you the second YouTube video that I have. All right, and I thought this was not bad. I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. All right, I'm gonna let you watch the video with me. All right. All right, this guy's got. All right, if you saw that, that was kind of pretty cool. Again, if I don't know if you can hear it too well, but uh, what he, if you can see, he's taking water and water, he's adding that small electric current right here. And when he added that electric current, all right, if he, he added that electric current, it produced gas, all right? It, bro it broke the water molecule apart. Like we had this water molecule earlier all right it broke this water molecule this time instead of forming the water molecule it broke it apart and it turned the water the hydrogen rejoined and made hydrogen gas and the oxygen rejoined and made the oxygen rejoined and made oxygen gas all right and so that's what he's showing right here and so it's making both of these things here all right um and so that's what we're trying to show here and this is in order for this reaction to happen you have to absorb energy energy must be taken in all right and so energy must be taken in so plus energy or heat and and that will help because without that electricity that reaction does not happen all right, without that electricity, here, uh, that reaction doesn't happen. Okay, and so in order for that to happen, it has to be taken in. And what do we call that type of reaction? Endothermic, endergonic. Okay, so that's what reaction it has to be taken in. All right, um, continuing on, some reactions happen easier and some reactions are more difficult to happen, right? especially in living things. The reactions that are blank occur easier and more naturally. Which of those reactions do you think happen easier? All right. Um, and I'll tell you what, nature does not like to provide energy. Okay, nature, things that are naturally, it's almost like naturally occurring. It doesn't take much energy to happen. Right, uh, like cleaning your room is not a natural process. All right, it's it takes energy to have that happen. In fact, when you don't clean your room, it just tends to get dirtier and dirty. And if you don't put that energy towards it, well, which one does not? What you have to put a little bit of energy to, but you don't have to put a lot, and then it produces a lot of energy. Which of those, exothermic or endothermic, or exergonic or endergonic? 
All right, and the one that you would say is that's easier to occur is exothermic or exergonic. Are the exothermic or exergonic reactions? Exothermic slash exergonic reactions occur easier and more naturally. Blank reactions require significant energy, therefore they don't typically occur in nature as frequent. I don't, they don't have, it doesn't happen. Endergonic and the endergonic and the er, ender, er, endergonic slash endothermic reactions require significant energy. They don't occur as easy. Okay? For life to continue, uh, both Endergonic and exergonic reactions must occur. Both endergonic and exergonic reactions. Both endergonic or endothermic and exergonic reactions must, both must occur in order for life to occur. In order for something to happen, to living things to do that, both must occur, All right? Um, next thing here, blank are substances that speed up a chemical reaction. Now we're getting into um, enzymes and stuff. But blank are substances that speed up a chemical reaction. Yes, it is an enzyme, but it's not right here. We're going to say this is going to be a catalyst. Catalyst are substances that speed up a chemical reaction. And one type or ca catalyst is an enzyme. Enzymes are things, are proteins that are catalysts. They speed up chemical reactions. In order for life to occur, um, in order for a life to occur, blank and blank must occur. Uh, chemical, uh, uh, chemical reactions must occur. That's what or for life to occur, chemical reactions must occur. We talked about that just a second ago. You get to have endergonic and exergonic reactions in order for life to occur, but they must occur fast enough. Some reactions are slow, and if you don't have them happen fast enough, life can't even exist. And so this is one of the amazing things about life is that we have these things called proteins that make the reactions happen fast enough. And that's where enzymes come in handy. That's where enzymes come in handy. All right. And so that's what we mean by that here. All right. And here's an example. All right. Um, and this is straight from Wikipedia. It's also in the textbook. And I thought it was really good. I thought it was really good. I'm going to read it here. The reaction shows the catalyzation of carbon. CO2 plus H2O, what does it produce? It should, I don't show this, but it's an arrow supposed to be, produces carbonic acid here. Um, and that's what it produces here, okay? Um, the catalyzation of carbonic acid in the lungs is shown as this. And so it takes this and it turns it back into this, all right? And this says the reason the reactions in the opposite direction, the tissues and the lungs is because of the different pH levels. All right, without the carbonic and hydrase, the reaction is very slow. And the catalyst, um, the ca uh, but however, with the catalyst, the reaction is 10 to the seventh times faster. That's like 10 million times faster. So this reaction is 10 million times faster with an enzyme. And what you're saying, I still don't get what you just meant by that here. Well, what happened is carbon, you know, we were talking, we talked, you known from like since like fourth grade that your body produces carbon dioxide. When you breathe in the oxygen, one of the things that your body produces is carbon dioxide. All right. And your body, every one of your cells produces this carbon dioxide and your body has to get rid of it. Okay. And so your blood takes it to your lungs and then it turns back into carbon dioxide and expelled out. But before, before it can get in your blood, it's got to turn into a transport, a, a method of transportation here. And that's called carbonic acid. This is how the blood, the carbon dioxide in your tissues, uh, in like your cells and your muscles and stuff like that, 
they combine with water and they make carbonic acid and they come it gets into your blood and it's carried up to your lungs once it gets to your lungs that carbonic acid turns back into carbon dioxide and turns out back into water and then and you expel it out and you breathe out that higher percentage of carbon dioxide now i do want to emphasize you don't breathe out carbon dioxide otherwise no one could ever give people cpr you breathe in oxygen and get nitrogen and all that type of stuff and you breathe out nitrogen and oxygen but you breathe out a slight higher percentage of carbon dioxide than you breathe in all right and so that's what's happening here without an enzyme this reaction happens too too slow but with an enzyme it happens fast enough for life to occur if you didn't have this enzyme you don't exist okay this enzyme is very very important it allows you to get rid of carbon dioxide from your body all right your body makes it because it's a waste product it's a chemical reaction made as a waste product but your body has to get rid of it and so it first converts it to carbonic anhydrase um, and, or carbonic acid, excuse me. And then it converts it to carbon dioxide in the lungs and you expel it out. All right, how do these enzymes work? All right, uh, in order to understand that, you gotta understand what activation energy is. When you hear about something being activated, what does that mean? you activate your phone yeah you just got a new phone you activate it what does that mean you get started okay well activation energy is an energy needed to start a chemical reaction energy needed to start a chemical reaction example um, I'm gonna try to think here. I like to give this example. Uh, I used to live in Montgomery, and in Montgomery we had this field, and it was this it was this field near our house, and um, and uh, this field, uh, in the course of time, it was really dry. We went through like a drought, and uh, this drought. Uh, came about and field was really dry. And then one day this, I was looking on the news and I said, oh, that's that field. And it, it was on the news and it, apparently that field that was nearby had caught on fire. And I was like, whoa, that's our field. And they said what they suspect that the field started on, got on fire because somebody threw like a cigarette butt out because the, everything was really dry and it didn't take much energy to start it. So that little bit of energy started it and made that whole field go on fire. I was like, wow, okay. Well, that's kind of what, would that, now the question is, is would that, would that field have caught on fire if you didn't have that little, that cigarette butt, if there was? No, probably not. Even though it was dry, it probably would not have happened. So you needed a little energy to start that big fire. That energy is called activation energy. Now, if that field had been drenched with rain and they threw out that cigarette butt, what would have happened? Nothing. <laughs> You're right, because it would have taken a huge amount of energy to make that field on fire. All right? And so that would take a huge amount of activation energy. Well, activation energy, energy needed to start a chemical reaction. And so I gave you the example of energy needed to start a fire. I uh, energy needed to start a fire. Typically things don't burn like the other way here. All right, next thing here. An enzyme's role is to make chemical reactions happen easier or easier by, how do they make chemical reactions easier? By lowering the activation energy. They lower by lowering the activation energy. All right, and if you look right here, all right, 
right, if you look, this is kind of what they do here. This is actually carbonic anhydrase. This is what happens in the blood and the tissues. Your body produces that carbon dioxide and water. It has that. And your body, it takes energy to convert it to carbonic acid. Without an enzyme, it takes, if you look at this graph, all right, what's being measured? Whatever's being measured is always on the what axis? Y axis. So you look at the energy. All right, the energy is, uh, it takes a good bit of energy to, if without an enzyme. But with an enzyme, and then it makes our, if you, ha if you get all that energy, and then it will make that carbonic, and that carbonic acid. All right, but with an enzyme, look what it does. Look at the energy. Is it it's more energy or less energy with the enzyme? Here's without an enzyme. Here's with an enzyme. Which one takes more energy to start without an enzyme? That's right. With an enzyme, it takes less energy to start. And so that's how uh, enzymes make reactions easier to happen because what they do is you have to have energy to start the reaction, but they make the energy to start the reaction lower. And so they lower what we call, and this energy to start it off is called the activation energy. All right, and so they lower the energy needed to start that reaction. All right, and so uh, the reactants or starting substances uh, in an enzyme bind, uh, what the, the reactants or starting substances in which the enzymes bind to are called the substrates. Are Part of the enzyme, um, the part where the enzymes bind to the substrate is called the active site. And enzymes are very substrate specific. That means they are picky. All right, they will only work with a specific, uh, enzymes only work with a specific substrate. It's only, and they actually described as a lock and key. It's almost like you, not every key works for every, um, in fact, only one key typically works. One type of key will work for each type of lock or not even one type of, for each, for each key, there's a lock. And so they don't, they're very specific. If you don't have the right key, it doesn't matter. It's not going to open that lock. Well, these are oftentimes enzymes and substrates are often described as lock and key. Very, that means they're very, very specific. The enzyme, the things that they work with are very, very specific. And so the, and so the example would be, right, so our example right here would be the carbon dioxide. There's a carbon dioxide, CO2, I'm not gonna be able to do that here. And the water, the H2O, they are, are the substrates, are the substrates. And the carbonic anhydrase is the enzyme. And so what they do is they will, the carbonic anhydrase and the carbon dioxide and water will bind together and then they'll make the new product, which is carbonic acid. Uh, but again, these are the substrates. These are the things here. Um, factors that affect the enzyme. All right, we actually read about one already, which is pH, how acidic or basic it is. The other thing is the temperature. And the other thing is the substrate concentration, how much of the reactant do you have? The substrate concentration. If you don't have much, there's not gonna be much activity. You know, there's not, if you, you might have a lot of enzymes, but if you don't have much substrate, you may not have much activity. Um, here are some enzymes. Again, it says there are thousands of enzymes in the human body, but here are just a couple. Lipases, they're a group of enzymes that help digest Amylase 
is is in your saliva and it helps break down starches like in potatoes and makes them into simple sugars um uh again and uh different different ones here dna polymerase synthesized dna from deoxyribonucle deoxyribonucleotides all right and if you look at all these um most of these enzymes they all end with what three letters they all end with a so um enzymes the last thing enzymes end with the suffix ace okay they end with the suffix ace all right and so they typically so if you look at all those they almost have they all end with that and again enzymes are very very important why what are enzymes what do they do they're proteins their job is to make what happen make chemical reactions happen fast enough in order for life to occur. Without enzymes, life does not occur because reactions like all these things that are right here, they can't happen unless you have an enzyme that makes the reaction happen fast enough. The reaction is probably, that will happen, but it, without the enzyme, it happened too slow. And so anyways, I wanted to give you a quick thought on those here. That was on our enzymes. Um, and so I hope you learned something with that. And I uh, will see you soon. All right. Talk to you later.